uh, Shield Healthcare webinar with Ostomy lifestyle expert Laura Cox. Uh, a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, I'd like the audience to know that the content presented is this webinar for this webinar is based on Laura's personal experience. Please understand that she is not a clinician and her advice is not intended to replace the recommendation of a medical professional. So again, it's lifestyle um, only and it is uh, Laura's personal experience. For urgent or medical issues, please consult with your doctor. Um, so viewers will be in a listen-only mode. If you have a question for Laura, please type it on the chat box. Um, this webinar is being recorded. so. Um, if you miss any portion of the webinar, uh, feel, feel free to log on to our community page and you can view the recorded webinar um, on the community site. Um, again, there are a lot of viewers on here, so we'll try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, but if you, if you don't get your question answered, please go on to our Ask Laura section of our SHIELD Healthcare website. Um, at this time, I'd like to present Laura Cox, Ostomy Lifestyle Expert at SHIELD Healthcare. Laura. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so today we're going to be talking about some lifestyle topics. And the topics for today are how to travel with an ostomy, how to tell a loved one about your ostomy, and how to swim with an ostomy. So quickly, I'd just really like to introduce myself and give you a little bit of my background so you know. Um, how I got involved with SHIELD. So I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis in 2010, and I went through all the medications that were approved thus far for, um, for ulcerative colitis, and none of them worked. So I had to get my ostomy in December of 2011, and they total left me. Um, about 11 days before I got my surgery, I started really wondering what life would be like with an ostomy. And so I started Googling things like, how to tell someone that you have an ostomy, how to swim, how to, um, you know, have a relationship with ostomies, all these lifestyle issues, and um, I couldn't find anything. And so then I made a decision 11 days prior to surgery to found a YouTube channel that is called Ostomy Story, and I really just addressed lifestyle issues with ostomies and just talked about my experiences and my you know, my achievements and also my downfalls with my ostomy. Um, about two years after that, Tosh.0 of Comedy Central found me and I went on there and through that, Shield Healthcare found me and I am now the ostomy lifestyle expert. So, now that that is aside, I would like to start with traveling with an ostomy. So, the first time I traveled with my ostomy was about three months after I got out of the hospital and I was so nervous. So I went online and I looked up a bunch of travel tips with an ostomy, and some of these are mine just from a bunch of experiences I've had now. So the tips that I found most helpful are to keep supplies somewhere accessible. I usually keep all of my supplies that I bring in my carry-on underneath the seat in front of me, so they're just so easy. So just in case I have a leak, I can grab them, run to the back of the airplane to the bathroom, and that that works great. I also pre-cut one or two flanges just because you never really know what the TSA is going to take away and what they're going to leave. So just in case they do take your scissors away, I've never had this problem, but it's good to be prepared. So just having one or two flanges pre-cut, so just in case you have a leak, they'll be all ready for you. Um, next. Take twice as many supplies as you think you need. It's really difficult to find the supplies that you need when you're not getting them through your own doctor or WOCN. Use odor eliminating drops. This is really important because if you have a tube piece and you would like to burp your ostomy or let gas out, you don't want to have to worry about the people around you smelling it. So using odor eliminating drops is just a really good thing to be considerate to the people around you. Um, also, make sure you hydrate and take plenty of snacks. It's really important because having an ostomy, it's much easier to become dehydrated. And also, it, you start feeling bad when you don't eat for a while. So just having nice snacks on hand is good. Um, 
or, and bring your body for the juice just in case you do get a blockage on the way. It's really good for resolving blockages. So um, this was another part of traveling that I was really apprehensive about. It was going through security. So I had attended a support group prior to going on my trip, and they said that the TSA should know what an OSCE is. So I went up to the TSA um, and told them prior to going through the scanner, and the woman that I told didn't know what an OSCE was, so she pulled me aside, patted me down, and placed my hands to check for any sort of, you know, explosives or anything that would be bad. And um, I was really shocked because I thought they, they had known about it. But instead of getting upset about it, I just decided to tell her what an ostomy is and kind of educate her. Um, so the tip that I've come up with for going through security is just to enter your ostomy before you go through security. You're only allowed three ounces in your carry-on anyways. Um, if you are stopped, it doesn't have to be embarrassing. It's a chance to educate a CSA member and also to maybe perhaps make it easier for another optimate to travel. Uh, for official guidelines, we just put the link below. Go to tsa.gov slash traveler dash information slash optimate. So this is, these are tips that I came up with after another traveling experience. Um, I was actually on the way back from that first trip and I thought that I had a little bit of gas in my ostomy, and so I decided to burp it and let the gas out. And lo and behold, it wasn't gas. It was very thin stool. Um, so I had a leak. Um, I guess you could call it that. And it had come down my abdomen and dripped down my leg a little bit. And so I ran to the bathroom. And luckily, I was prepared. So I had a washcloth with me, and I washed myself off, popped my ostomy back on to the wafer and it was okay. So really just to emphasize using odor neutralizing drops or products when you travel and to bring a washcloth in your carry-on and to, even if you think it's gas, just go to the bathroom. It's better to be safe than sorry. Um, so I want to emphasize, since we did talk about a couple of things that can go wrong while traveling, that I have had three international trips, over a dozen domestic flights, two long road trips and two international train rides without any problem. So really traveling with an ostomy is just something where you need to be prepared and you need to be positive and bring all of your supplies, your pills, your doctor's notes, just in case. Um, and the last thing is that attitude really is everything when traveling with an ostomy. Um, it's best to just roll with the punches and be prepared and Hopefully this will be a liberating and confidence building experience of traveling with your ostomy. So next I'd like to talk about how to tell a loved one. And I'd also like to note that all the pictures on here are my loved ones and they all know about my ostomy. Um, this is a really difficult thing to, um, to talk about sometimes because my main concern were that I would provoke sympathy, and that's not why I tell someone about my ostomy. I don't want them to feel sorry for me or to think that I'm always sick. I want to tell them about my ostomy because I want to show them how much better off I am or just to have them understand my way of life. And another fear for me was being abandoned. Um, I was worried that once I told my friends about my ostomy or about my illness that they wouldn't want to be friends with me anymore because I knew that people aren't always comfortable with illness. They're not always comfortable with the idea of pain and, and medical issues. So I found a way to kind of tell people that I was comfortable with, and I call it a script. So a script is essentially just something that you plan out prior to telling someone. And you practice it in the mirror, or you just say it over and over in your head so that you never really have to worry about being put on the spot when you tell someone about your ostomy. So just to make the script universal is really important. Um, my script is universal, so I can use it for my grandma. I can use it for my nieces and nephews. I can use it for strangers and people I've known for a long time. Um, it's best to keep your script positive. Uh, the more comfortable you 
being with out to me, I find the more comfortable other people are with the idea of it as well. And just convey to the other person that you're open to questions and that you appreciate their interest. So I always kind of ask them if they have any questions, if they're comfortable hearing about my ostomy. It's just really good to have open communication when you're telling a loved one about your ostomy, about your, your illness. Um, so this is my script that I have um, kind of put together, and I just wanted to give an example of something that I say. So mine is, four years ago, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease that attacks my colon. My disease got so bad that in order to save my life, the doctors had to remove my colon. Because my small intestine isn't connected to my colon anymore, I had to get an ostomy. My life is so much better because of it. So you can notice that I really end on a positive note. My life is so much better because of it. And this, I just want to portray that people shouldn't feel sorry for me because of it. I am, in my mind, my ostomy saved my life and probably my doctor's mind too. So at this point is the time where you should really gauge how the person is feeling. Um, if you feel like they're uncomfortable, I would just stop at this point and say, thanks for listening. Now I just wanted to get that out. Um, but if a person seems comfortable or interested, you can ask if they know what an ostomy is. Um, if they say no and ask what it is, then I would come up with another script or your own way of explaining what an ostomy is. And I just kind of attached my second script of telling people what an ostomy is, and I keep it really simple and kind of um, leave parts of it to the imagination. And you can just say, I poop in a bag now, if that's something you're comfortable with. There are no rules. It really just is about how comfortable you are with telling someone and your personality. So mine is, my ostomy is a part of my intestine that sticks slightly out of my abdomen and it empties into an external bag. So as you can see, I leave a lot to the imagination, what empties into an external bag, you know, but um, that's just what I'm comfortable with. So the last topic I would like to talk about is swimming with an ostomy. This is another thing I was really apprehensive about. Um, I worried about having a leak in the pool. I wondered, will it... Will I have to change my ostomy afterwards? How am I going to conceal it? Should I conceal it? So the first thing I want to address is how do I avoid leaks after I swim? So one of the most important things is to know if your flange has a waterproof barrier or not. And I attached a picture below of what a waterproof barrier around the flange looks like. Um, if you do not have a waterproof barrier, there are other ways that you can make your flange waterproof. Um, there are different types of seals and strips that you can find. Uh, I also want to note that if you use a seal or a strip, you take it off after you swim, just because you may develop a slight yeast infection underneath or your skin may react. So these are the most frequently asked questions I have gotten about swimming with an ostomy. Um, so does swimming with an ostomy reduce, oh sorry, <laughs> does swimming reduce the wear time of my ostomy? Um, I usually notice like a one day decrease in, in my ostomy wear time, but it really does depend on what type of water you're swimming in as well. Is it better to swim right after changing your ostomy or right before you change? Uh, once again, it's kind of up to you. I, I swim whenever, actually, so it's really a personal preference. I haven't found that one's way is better than the other. And does salt water affect your ostomy differently than chlorine water? I found that salt water does decrease your wear time a little bit more than chlorine water, usually by just one extra day, though. Um, so to conceal or not to conceal? This is, once again, really personal preference. If you're comfortable with showing that you have an ostomy, then you can just wear your favorite bathing suit. Um, if you choose to conceal it, though, a flattering one piece, a tiny teeny, a monokini works. Um, and when you're doing that, keep in mind that dark colors and patterns conceal the back. There are also swim wraps for men and women that are especially made to hide your ostomy. Um, some people use having duct tape on their ostomy outside so that they hide that tan skin colored cloth that looks a little bit medical. Um, also, tank tops for men or for women. and 
rash guards can sometimes work. Uh, so once I, once again, I said, like, if you choose not to conceal, then just wear your favorite swimsuit and pop it in. So that concludes my prepared part of this. We're going to now open up to questions and answers. But first, if you would like to visit Shield Healthcare, um, we have more Q&As, we have videos, we have helpful blogs and helpful resources for people with acne. So you can see that at shieldhealthcare.com slash community slash acne. All right. So if you have a question for Laura, please type it in the chat box. Uh, don't be shy. Uh, as, as you can see, Laura has been pretty open. Um, thus far. So a couple of questions have been rolling in. Um, Laura, how do you get over the emotions? I've had the pouch for two years and I still have emotions about it still. Um, that's really difficult. So the, <laughs> it's really difficult to get over the emotions of having an optomy. And I think a lot of how I have tried to maneuver it, although I'm still working on it, is by using self-affirmations and by realizing that I can do a lot of things with my ostomy that I couldn't have prior to having an ostomy. So building positive experiences with an ostomy is great. So if you enjoy swimming or hiking or horseback riding, go do those and, and realize that your ostomy doesn't stop you from doing that. And um, like I said, self-affirmations, don't know what that is. It's um, where you think about all the things that you would like to be and you say them out loud. You say, mine are actually, my four favorite are, I am beautiful, I am strong, I am loved, and I can handle anything that comes my way. And I know it sounds so cheesy to say it, but saying it out loud, especially looking at yourself in the mirror, after a while you start to believe it. And I would just look up a lot more um, tips about building confidence and building happiness online. Great. Um, how do you handle the air in the pouch and the odor? Um, so handling the odor is easy because you can use odor eliminating drops. Also, um, I have known a couple of people to use mint Tic Tac. Um, I know that sounds funny, but they say that it comes out smelling minty. Um, so it covers up the smell, but I really enjoy the odor eliminating drops because then it's, it's pretty much odorless. Uh, the gas is a little bit more difficult. You can get bags with filters, although they clog after a couple of days just because that's the nature of school, you know, clogging the filter. So if you have a two-piece, then you can just pull the, um, the bag part away from the, the wafer and what we call burp it. Or you can, if you have a one piece, just go to the bathroom, unfortunately. There are some other products you can find online to help eliminate gas. So. Great. Thanks, Laura. Um, do you have problems with the heat? I'm really having problems with overheating. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, and I think that that's, that's pretty common because it is a lot more difficult to stay hydrated with an ostomy. Um, so I guess my tip for being in hot weather would be just taking, ask your doctor, but take some Imodium um, just because that slows down your digestive tract. And um, eat about like 10, 15 minutes prior to drinking water. Um, use a lot of Gatorade and like drink with electrolytes, even Pedialyte or like orange juice is good. So just eat something that will stop up that, so like some bread or crackers or even mashed potatoes are a good school thickener. So definitely hydrate, 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 and if you're still having problems, then definitely talk to your doctor. Great. Go, um, going back to the odor eliminating drops, how do you use the odor eliminating drops, like when and where? Okay. Um, so how do you use the odor eliminating drops? You, um, how to use them is it's pretty simple. So what you do is you empty your bag first, and then you just, at the bottom where the stool comes out, you put it like upwards, facing upwards, and you just drop, like, I usually drop five to eight drops in there, and you close it back up, smush it around, 
and that will really take care of the odor. And when to use it, that's kind of up to you. I only use it about once a day. Right when I get up, I empty my ostomy and then put the drops in. But a lot of people do use it after every time they empty. So that's really personal. Great. Thanks, Laura. Um, can you talk about uh, exercising with an ostomy and what your limits are as far as yeah, exercising? Yeah, definitely. So uh, exercising is, is a big part of my life, and I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to do it after I got my ostomy. And I really have found that starting slow is really the way to go with like walking and swimming and low impact exercises like biking. And once you feel like you're ready to move on and your doctor says that you're okay to lift weights, you can start lifting light weights. And um, now I know that I, I lift heavy weights and I just ran my first half marathon. You can do a lot of things. The only thing I avoid is abdominal like crunches and working my abs directly just because since we have incisions, our abdominal wall may be a little bit weaker, so we want to avoid hernias. I would also invest in a hernia belt or spank like material. Great. Thanks, Laura. Um, many days the waste doesn't go into the bag. It accumulates at the opening. Any suggestions? Um, yeah, so when your waste accumulates at the top of the bag, I would suggest um, a lubricating deodorant. And um, this is really great because you do have to work it up the, to the part of that your ostomy where it pancakes, but that helps the stool slip down to the bottom. So just any sort of lubricating um, ostomy supply will work. Great. Very good. You mentioned duct tape when swimming. Can you elaborate yeah, on that? Yeah, sorry. I don't know if I was very clear on that. So um, on just the actual bag part of the uh, ostomy, some people get like pattern duct tape, like their zebra and cheetah patterns, and they just put that on top of their, so say you had a clear ostomy bag or you just don't like the skin color part of the bag, then you can put like a cute pattern on it, essentially, and some people wear bikinis with that. Great. Very good. Um, so you talk about what to wear when you're swimming. Do you have any thoughts about when you're going just out and about and the thought about wearing tight-fitting pants? Yeah. So um, I, every day, use Spanx-like material. So Spanx are like elastic that goes up above your ostomy and just really is tight and um, it really helps push your ostomy close to your body. And I wear tight clothes and can't be underneath anymore. So um, I do want to say that if your stomach is a little bloated or painful, this might not be the best option. But when you're feeling well, uh, you can wear a tight dress, tight pants, tight shirt, and you'll be OK. Great. Um, what is the best way to take care of the skin around the stoma? The best way to take care of the skin around the stoma is to make sure that you don't have any leaks by changing it regularly, by cutting the hole the correct size for your stoma. And um, also, when you change your pouching system, to make sure that you clean the skin and dry it completely, and then use stoma powder for any parts that may be damaged by the adhesive. Um, you can also use barrier wipes and just make sure that your ostomy fits right snug towards you, and um, just like I said, make sure the hole is the correct size. Great. Um, I think we have time for a few more questions. Um, do you have any uh, dieting tips for um, new ostomates and what you can tolerate and what you can't? Yeah, dieting tips for new ostomates. I would say, first of all, gradually add things in um, because you want to know what your body reacts well to and what your body reacts poorly to. So the best way to do that is to add like one new food a day. I would also suggest chewing a ton. Chewing is so essential to help aid in your digestion, to help break that food down because you don't have parts of your intestine anymore. So you really should 
help along the digestion process and also just drinking a ton of water after you eat. All right. Um, so you talked about telling a, how to tell a loved one about your ostomy. How do you tell the person that you're dating that you have an ostomy and what it is and et cetera? So I think that um, once again, it's really up to your comfort level, how comfortable you feel with that person. Um, usually how I tell a loved one is very similar to my script, but I usually talk a little bit more about my history prior to having an ostomy so they understand exactly why I had to get one. So. I usually talk about how my ulcerative colitis affected my life. So to say I was, I was really sick, I had to stop running, I had arthritis-like symptoms so I couldn't get up the stairs by myself and it got so bad that I had to get surgery and because of that surgery I got something called an ostomy and it's an external bag on my thigh and um, or on my abdomen, excuse me. And, um, Figure out what kind of script is comfortable for you and really emphasize that your life is, is good and that you are completely normal. You know, I think that's really, really important because if you make it a big deal, the other person will. But if you kind of say, this is my life and it's great and it's wonderful, I have a couple extra things I have to do in the morning, but that's it, then I think that they'll really understand too. Great. Uh, a couple more questions. So you may have answered this already. Uh, um, swimming with an ostomy. I got in the ocean waves a bit and my, my bag got a little wet and started to leak. How can I swim again without fear? So swimming again without fear, definitely. Um, I can see why you would be fearful. Um, if you do have a waterproof barrier and somehow the, the ocean water did create a leak, I would suggest finding another product that you could put over your waterproof barrier. There are great tapes that you can find and also great seals. Um, so then you'll have two layers of protection. So I think that that would be really helpful. And just know that just because it, it happened once doesn't mean it will happen again. There's a possibility. But um, I've been snorkeling in the ocean and swimming in the ocean. and. Um, I haven't had many problems, but sometimes I do use a backup waterproof seal over my waterproof barrier. So there's a funny comment here. Just sharing, I named my ostomy Colleen. She is a nasty lady with a potty mouth. <laughs> when I told my doctor this, he had tears rolling down his face. Love it. I love that. <laughs> I love that. That's a great <laughs> comment. My name is Trixie because she likes to, when I'm changing my ostomy, I like to say Trixie. Please don't play any tricks on me today. So <laughs> that's, that's nice to know my Great. That's awesome. Um, okay. Uh, I think we've covered the majority of the questions. Um, if you have a question for Laura, uh, please go to the Ask Laura section of our uh, community page. That's www.shieldhealthcare.com slash community. And uh, th again, this webinar is being recorded, so it will be posted on, on our community site, uh, hopefully tomorrow or the beginning of next week. Um, so I'd like to thank everybody for joining us uh, on our webinar, and I'd like to thank Laura for a great presentation. That was great. Um, and uh, thank you for being a part of this webinar, and have a great afternoon. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.